before we get into the video, I want to show you a couple people's tanks. Here's an Asta 120 light over Mark's Aquarium. He sent it to me, and the very first words he said is, a loving this light. And of course, he has a jungle tank, and it's doing great. Which is good to get information like this because then other hobbyists can see that, hey, this is a nice light for the price, like I said. And this whole video is going to be on lighting, a little bit more information. But uh, beautiful tank, Mark. Absolutely gorgeous tank. Then we come over to uh, Pam's six-foot-long tank with her goldfish in it. Now, Pam has written me an extensive letter and... She explains that she has over 13 tanks, and of course they range all the way up to 125 gallon aquariums, and she is now converting them over with plenums. But interesting information that Pam is giving here with her goldfish here is that uh, she used to do water changes like every three to seven days, and now she does them every two weeks. So there's a she she is using different layers of the plenum, and her last layer, of course, is sand for the goldfish. But uh, she has a real nice big that red that real big uh, ryunkin there, uh, that red and white ryunkin. It looks like a pretty good size ryunkin, along with the black moor and uh, calico she has. But I want to thank uh, oh she has a ranchu too a calico ranchu. But I did uh, want to thank you for sending me the pictures. I'm trying to get to everybody's pictures and information. And now on with the video. Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Novak. What I want to talk to you about is to show you something and to uh, send a point I was making pretty much home. The point, this, the light that's above the 48 gallon here is the Radeon Ecotech light. This is the same light that was on uh, the 90 gallon when I started the 90 gallon because it came with the SCA Aquarium. For eight months now, this tank has been using this light, the Fluval 3.0. This is the uh, waterproof light that Fluval makes. Fluval, uh, I think this is the 32 inch to 40 inch, 46 inch light. This is. And if you remember when I talked about lighting, that I talked about that when you get a light like this, a strip light, that you literally have to divide it into one foot sections. And this is over 3,000 luminous. Sounds like a lot. But actually, if you go by every foot, that only you're only putting out about a thousand looms, which isn't as much as you think. And that's the problem with strip lights, that you have to understand a lot of hobbyists, they buy them and realize later on, I don't have enough lighting for an aquarium that has plants in it. This is the goldfish tank. And being that at eight, eight months old. So in eight months, I got to see exactly how that fluval light worked. Not a bad light or anything. In fact, if you look at the pictures, you'll see it looked very bright to the human eye. But what usable light is for the plants, and is it bright enough? Years ago, we looked at luminous output. The more luminous output you had, the more likely you were going to have your plants photosynthesize. And when a plant completely photosynthesizes, peak photosynthesis, I should say, you will get oxygen bubbles. There are oxygen bubbles here on this hornwort. And these oxygen bubbles are coming up when the plant is photosynthesizing at its peak. And that means that the whole aquarium has now reached its maximum of oxygen levels for the particular temperature that it's at. This tank is at about 75 degrees. So at 75 degrees, the tank now is at saturation oxygen levels 
that are naturally occurring. Unless you have uh, some way of saturating the oxygen a little differently, which would be an oxygen reactor, which means that oxygen is being pumped into a reactor with oxygen, uh, our air, and it's under pressure. And then this impregnates the water with oxygen. Otherwise, naturally, when this happens, you'll see oxygen bubbles occurring if your light is strong. Now, if you look at the videos that I have, and I'll show you pictures, these pictures, you will see that the light's been on. It looked bright all the way through. But I thought, I'll put the radiant light on. And I'll, it's higher off the aquarium because remember when I, I did this, I made it so it's about four, four and a half inches off the aquarium because it was too close and it made dark spots in the, in the front and in the back. Well, this makes dark spots too, but where the radion reaches, within a matter of hours, you'll see oxygen bubbles all over the plants. Now, in eight months, I never had any oxygen bubbles. Be truthful with you, with the fluval, three foot, which puts out over 3,000 looms, no oxygen bubbles, because actually I was only putting a thousand, a thousand, and a thousand. This is putting out 195 watts of LED, which is equal to a 400 watt metal halide. And this is putting out anywhere between 12 to 18,000 looms. And within hours, you can already see the Harnworth bubbling, meaning that the plants are photosynthesizing. And this is where new hobbyists waste money and don't get the right lights right away because they're looking at a cost factor and they're choosing their lights incorrectly and before you know it, they buy something like this. Like I said, in eight months, this never, never made the plants bubble. Never. And so I wanted to find out about this because what happens if your plants aren't photosynthesizing, they're not using up nutrients out of the water. Yeah, they're growing, but if they're not at peak photosynthesis, like a lot of people say, plants use nitrogen and phosphorus. But they only will use nitrogen at peak photosynthesis because it is chemical work. And because of that, it takes so much energy to convert nitrates back into nitrites and then back into ammonia. Because it takes so much energy, they have to be at like all these oxygen bubbles, you see, they have to be at peak photosynthesis. And once they reach that, then they're able to spare some of that energy to convert any nitrates you may have in the water column when it's finally start of its ammonia. So in this particular tank, we have no different. Even though it doesn't have CO2, we already have oxygen bubbles all over the Harnworth. And I put this light on to make sure that the water lilies that are in here had bright enough light to photosynthesize. And I could see right now, I'm looking underneath the lily pad, and you can actually see oxygen bubbles. So that means the water lily is photosynthesizing too. Okay, and sending energy down to the riding zone. So why I'm doing this video is because I did a video on the astolites. And if you didn't see it, watch my last video. They're, they're inexpensive. In fact, you could buy two astolites cheaper than you could buy this. And you could have set up two astolites in this three, three foot long aquarium. But this goes to show you that no, you don't have to buy a very expensive radion light like this. I had it available. It came with the aquarium. I decided to put on this tank and I do see a definite difference and growth and everything else of the hardware that's in this aquarium. But I did not see the same results as with the fluval. Yes, I saw growth. 
And as you remember, I did videos on it. But never did they photosynthesize or peak photosynthesize. They grew, but not any peak photosynthesis. Let me tell you something. If you want to find out you have enough light on your aquarium, and this is what we used to do years ago, see if your light is bright enough to cause photosynthesis without CO2. If you cannot make your plants get bubbles on them without adding any CO2 to your aquarium, your lights aren't bright enough. That was an old trick we did. This was way before anyone could complicate it with PAR and expensive $350, $500 PAR meters, which nobody is going to buy, to use them once or twice in their whole lifetime. This is how you do it. Make sure you put light on. Do you see any oxygen bubbles? No. Okay, you need more light. Add another light and another light until you finally get that. Because all this is going to do is it will have oxygen bubbles when you get enough lights. It will just suck out the CO2 that's in there. Now you can start adding more CO2 as a food source, and then your plants will even grow faster because that's another carbon source which the plants need to grow, a food source for them. So most people, when they set up an aquarium, they set up a brand new tank. They start using CO2 right away, and they have no idea of none of their plants are photosynthesizing. They're growing slowly, but they're not really getting the oxygen bubbles on it. And how you come up with this is in the 20-gallon aquarium, the 20-gallon antique tank, when the sun shines through, the hardware that's in there is just full of oxygen bubbles, yet there's no CO2 being injected into it. And that's a real good case to tell you that your lighting system you have on there is not strong enough for the depth you have and the plants you have. That's an easy way to tell you that you need more lighting. Once your plants start that photosynthesis and start making the purling of oxygen bubbles, now you know you have enough light, you go on to the next step of adding CO2 to accelerate growth. So that's an old, old trick that older hobbies have done for years and years and years because of the fact we didn't have PAR meters. You didn't need them. You just looked at your plants, see if they start bubbling or creating bubbles. You knew I have enough light. If they don't, you don't have enough light. Pretty simple and clear. So. That's why I wanted to show you this. So if this is over 3,000, you only have 1,000 in this one foot of luminous output. That's not enough. Even though the tank visually to our eye looked very bright and, and like, wow, it looks bright, looks good. Look at my old filming, you know, the tank looks good. But far, as far as the plants were concerned, it was not quite enough light. So actually, I'd have to buy two of these and put them next to each other. Now that would make for every foot, let's say, over 2,000 luminous output for every foot of tank. So I'd have two for if I was using two of these. Well, by the time you get two of these, you might as well go out and buy your can lights, you know, like your Asta or something like that. Buy something that otherwise you're going to have to wind up buying more strips. And of course, we've seen YouTube videos where people have more than one strip because one strip was not enough. And I think this strip here, I think this flugel strip here is like 180 bucks. So you figure you got $400 almost tied up in two of these for a little, you know, 40 gallon breeder tank. That's a lot of money when you can buy two astolites for 160 bucks, and it will put out 6,000 loom per can light. And this was just common sense, but it was something that I just thought I would show you. Big difference between this light and the Fluval light. 
Not that the flumolite is bad, but I would need more of them to do the same as what this light's doing. This whole top is just full of oxygen bubbles. Okay? It may save you a few bucks in the long run. And if you've already spent your money, see what happens before you start throwing all kinds of fertilizers and all kinds of uh, uh, CO2 on something that's never going to grow correctly. You just may not have enough light. So until next time, this is Dr. Novak. Thank you very much for watching.